pike o'clock in the morning. Get that eating on. Right, bit of a trundle up the M6. It's still dark o'clock. Go and get a day ticket. And about six trips of Cheeseburger Hill. Half seven. Been and got my ticket. Sun's coming up. Now I've got to tackle Cheeseburger Hill. This should be fun. I'm having five minutes, done three trips. Hanging out my ass. <sighs> Cheeseburger Hill. <sighs> Not for the faint acid. Last trip. <laughs> I think I'll have a granddad nap for a couple of hours. Knackered. There's half of it built. Right. Got the rigs out, bit of a difference. Thought of fancy a bit of a change. Uh, that is a Gray's safe system pop up rig, apparently, according to the packet. So interchangeable weights etc. It's got a stiff boom net. Got a link, a couple of swivels, 28 pound wire trace, and half a mackerel popped up. With a single hook in the tail, which is that basically. Happy days. So, got mackerel tail on that one, popped up, I might have a sardine and something else on the other ones. So, that's the rigs, something different. Let's see if that does any good. Right, so, got a sardine, popped up, same rig. Half a mackerel, popped up, and a pollen. So it looks like it's got a fucking busted nose. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the three rigs again all popped up off the bottom right let's get them whacked out see if we can get old pikers interrupters on the bank right that's the pollen let's see how that pops up Beautiful. So on a single look, be able to give it a good crack. Oh. Happy days, there's one out. Right, let's have a mooch at the sardine. Lovely. Get that cracked out.
right mackerel so he does tail end charlie fabulous oh so I check it There we go, and that hook takes the brunt of the cast, so your rig don't go one way and your bait go another. That's it, we're in. We are fishing. Happy days. Time for the brew, me thinks. Getting a bit nippy sat here. Old Pikus Interruptus hasn't made an appearance. Imagine it's only quarter to ten. Sun's out and under me brolly. Ah, well, I'll have me brew. We'll think so. some tip sticks and handy hints. Got a bell to come in. Oh, fucking hell, here we go. Uh, I might knock the load of the rig up actually. And have a, have a go on the float in a bit. So the bait's sitting up in the uh, upper layers of the water, let's say, as opposed to on the bottom with them ledges. But I'll get one ready anyway. Knock it up. So I'm gonna go for, ooh, size six. Super strength trebles, Grace Prowler. Couple of them. The hardest part about making rigs is untangling everything first. A couple of them bad boys, and then chuck the rest on the floor just for a fucking laugh. What else have we got? I need my little third single hook. Which I keep in here. It's the other tackle box. Keep a selection, an erection, a selection, and he's a camasan with a turned in eye, so it don't kink your wire. Happy days. More on that coming very soon. Right, so I've got my monkeys and parrots. I need some crimps. Put all the tackle box down there because I need me crimping too. Oh, whatever that. I didn't get anything out, I'll just turn the camera on. So we're going to be fucking about. Right, so crimps, Chinese crimps. Can top bomber. Do the job down to a T. Never had one slip. So, I've got an 8mm crimp here. 8 mils the length, not the width. It's uh, about 1.2mm. It's the fiddly bit. Ooh, 
that's a bit a bit tight that one I'll try another these are a bit wider 1.3 mil So we've got a little tag end sticking out. I know you can't see it, but I'll show you when it's done. And a little tag end sticking out. Obviously not been crimped yet. Small end of the crimping tool. Grip that. Let's push it a little bit further in. Push boss boss. Jobs are good and Happy days. I think I'll just put a, uh, a little crimp cover on that one. Ooh. There we go. Just say push, pushing wrong one. That's that one. Then my second hook. Which I've probably dropped on the floor. No, there she is. This is the way I tied the second one on. Through the eye of the hook, if you can keep it still. And then look at the length of the body of your fish you're going to be using. I might put a sardine on there, so I want it pretty small. About there. And then I wrap that round the back like so and then tie it off like yeah not must not pull it through don't let it go so it'll just all unravel I try not to kink it on the way through give that a tug and then I'll just put a little sleeve over that. And I'm going to put a black one on a bit smaller. They're for size twos, them red ones. And they're size six. And then close my boxes up, otherwise it'll be all over the floor. Okay, okay. Right, I'm gonna put my single hook. That's a camera san, as I say, I think it's a size six. That just takes the weight of the fish on the cast. But it has actually hooked back before on on a few occasions. If you look back in the videos, you'll see one. Right, so this is an upside down knotless knot now to get this on. So I don't slide it through there like you normally do because that'll end up kicking up or down. So I'll put it through the eye and it just stops it kinking then if you've got the interned eye. And then tail of the fish, probably going to be about there. Days and then that's a knot, that's not oh, springy. Let's do it this year. And then go back through the end of the eye upwards. Otherwise, you'll get a kinky hook and then hold on to that so it doesn't spring open and it comes out the end of the hook straight then. Just put 
put another little sleeve on there. That's it. That's the hook ends anyway. Then I put, put a swivel on. I don't bother putting a rubber tube on this end. Another crimp. Barrel swivel. Push that back through. Little tag in there. Then you can just pull that down. Tag in stays where it is. That okay. Happy days, job's a good one. There we go. Might get the float rod out later. A little bit of a sardine in the top layers of the water. Because they might be up there. They might be in the thermocline. And not mooching about on the bottom. Which they do in some places. Maybe not here. There's my brain now. Top bomber. Hmm. Come on, Pikus interrupted, you bastard, Jeff. Yeah. Right. I think I'll have a bash with a float rod. Covered in money spiders. I've mugged four of them, only got 47 pence. Must be poor around here. Right, so that's the float rig. All made float, balsa float, between a couple of rubber beads with a stop knot, ball bearing swivel with a link, and a bit of silicon tube over the top just to tidy everything up. Then we've got this Gray's uh, How's Your Father job here, again, interchangeable, that's 40 gram. Because we've got a big float. 150 pound up trace basically. Well that is, pipe won't buy through that. And then that rig I've just knocked up there. Get a sardine on that, I think. Get in the upper layers. See if there's any mooching about there. I'll have to take one of them out, though. So, let's go through the bone. There we go. Happy days. Let's see if that does any better. What's that? Oh, four foot. Might go to about six foot. There we go. So I take one of them out. Stick this out for an hour. Top bomber. Sun's out, plums out.
Sit my ass on the cold stones, rocks, boulders, wobbly wall. Right, it's lunchtime. Time for some ticks, tricks, and handy hints. Yeah, even the shops next door, they'll be on it. So, arm your rations, boil in the bags, put them in water, eat them up. You've got some scoff, hot scoff. Well, I've made my own. Yeah. And it costs about one pound fifty. So got the stove on, let that warm up. So ten bob Mexican rice, spicy Mexican rice, which is not that spicy to be honest, because I've been eating them all week. Fucking great at home as well. 250 grams of rice, and there's a spider crawling down the lens. A tin of tuna chunks. Drained weight 102 grams, so there's 352 grams and a little bit of how's your father sweet chili sauce. Yep, that's just to uh, because it's a bit dry with just that. Put a bit of that in and I mix it all up with my latte spoon and get to the bottom of the bag with this. More tips, six and handy testicles. Right, so that's going to be on the boil. Just going to open that slightly, push the rice up. You want big bits, it takes more, longer to warm up. Want some? Ah, the fish in. Here we go to my boiling water, or which it will be very shortly. Lid on. Lid on. I've got to open that. I forgot my tin opener. So it's a BFK time, isn't it? Some fire oil that. Get rid of that. Oh, a bit of salad there. <laughs> Let that drain. Sweet chilli sauce. Give it a good shake. Top bomber. Yes, another use of BFKs. Opening tins of tuna, if they haven't got the ring pull. In fact, opening any tins. Yeah. So the beauty of these boiling the bags, it's in a tin, it's got a five year shelf life. Sling that in your bag. There's your meat sustenance. The rice, it's got two year shelf life, but it'll probably last a hell of a lot longer than that. Again, sling it in your bag. Yep. And that'll survive fucking nuclear war, that will. Yep, with cockroaches. Yep, there's that many preservatives in it. A little bit of sauce, mix it up, sling it in your bag. So you've always got some scoff and you can leave it in there for years. Yep. And always got something to eat. It's not like it's fucking bacon and eggs. Oh, it's all gone off. And it's a hot meal for one. And they are quite filling actually. Yep, I've had a few of them. They are quite filling. On the bank cuisine. If you go to uh, 
if you go to the camping shops and the hiking shops and you get them boiling the bags yeah you get 200 grams for like five quid six quid yeah one pound fifty same thing isn't it it's food it's nice as well especially that little bit of chili sauce in there yeah it's not bomber Any fucking fish I'm gonna to see today. So that's on the boil now, in the bag. And the bags, make sure you get the ready cooked rice that's in the bag, not the crunchy stuff, else all your Penelope Keefe will fall out. That'll warm the rice. Bit of tuna, bit of chilli sauce, give it a good mix. Get it on your Gregory Peck. Can you not knock it? That's the ticket. And as you can see, the bag doesn't melt. Open that up. Nine p for three. Own bargains. Tips, tricks, and he loves buds. Oh, oh, it was like a bottom burp. Plastic favoured bro. The name of your tuna without spilling it everywhere. Give it a good blanding. And with the uh, with the chili sauce and the tuna goes in, it just cools it down that little bit so you don't burn your flaps off. And the beauty of it is you can eat it cold as well. So couple of them, couple of them, bottle of that. Chuck it in your bag, bob's your teapot, hot or cold. <sighs> hot bummer. Mm. Mm. That's a ticket. Tips, tricks, and he loves buds. Ten bob. Or oh, Uncle Ben's is a pound, pound fifty, depending on where you go. Yeah, there's all different kinds. I like the smart, spicy Mexican. Yeah, boring plain rice. Nah. Got a bit of flavour, ain't it? Back in the bag. Chuck it. <coughs> Chuck it in the Vera Lynn when I get home. It makes you burp though. And then you're going to spend the rest of your session picking rice out your teeth. Come on, Pikus, interrupt us.
Just a little second, Cap. <laughs> Wibbly wobbly. Snagged up. Fresh bait time. Another sardine, I think. Fish bash bash. Oh, Just at the bottom. Took its turn, didn't it? Slow sinking now. That pop up. 40 gram of weight. Half three. Getting on. I had one peep. That was in my trousers. The looks of it, nobody's had any along this bank anyway. One of those days. Sunshine, flat calm. Little peep on the left hand rod. Half four, looks like another blank. Slow pack up, drive home in the dark. Better than sitting on couch though, innit? Looks like it's been sick. It's a floating one. Nope. Not even touched. Yep. Seagulls will get it before the pike do. Let's see if can break the fucking neck again.
Maggie down there. Yeah, yeah. Didn't lose my mackerel though. Good old single look. Brings your bait back. Didn't take them long, did it? Oh, look at them, scoffing it. That's his tea. Ryan, I'll bring me gun next time. Then you fucking had it. <laughs> Cheeseburger, Bill.